Welcome to Uncommy Goods. The pandemic of 2020 exposed America's reliance on Chinese-made goods. Not only were we short on critical life-saving equipment, much of it from China ended up being defective. We were caught with our face masks down. They played us. Why is America handing off production of critical goods to China and what can we do about it? Here on Uncommy Goods, we expose the nefarious misdeeds of the Chinese government. Prison labor, suppression of human rights, theft of intellectual property, imperialist actions towards other nations, the list goes on. Let's hit them where it hurts. Stop buying goods made in China. And it's not all doom and gloom over here. This show celebrates the makers of Uncommy Goods, the stuff made right here in America, maybe even in your own backyard. Meet the people behind small American businesses, learn the secrets of their success, and how buying American goods supports innovation, local communities, jobs, and economic opportunity. And I'll even crack a few jokes while we're at it. Let's make it in America. I'm your host, Lars. This is Uncommy Goods. Hey, welcome to episode 26 of Uncommy Goods, Cotton, Commies, and Computers. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you could probably see that I need a lot of help with lighting, a better webcam. So let me know if there's any good American brands out there so I can look as decent as possible on YouTube. You know, and if there's not an American brand webcam, you know, just let me know if there's something that's anything not made in China. You know, I was very close to buying one today. It's like a webcam with like a light. But then I was browsing Amazon and I was using, of course, the Cultivate Chrome extension. Turns out the one I liked was made in China. Uh, so to avoid the thing I almost did today, which is hit click on something that's made in China, go to wecultivate.us and it's a Chrome extension you can download for your Chrome browser and helps you make sure you're not buying stuff made in China and it makes it easier to buy American made goods. They're not a sponsor. I just like them and I like promoting and spreading the word. So back to the episode. This happens all the time. I start looking at one topic regarding the awful, nefarious, devious, sneaky policies of China. And then like something else comes up. It's exactly like whack-a-mole. You know, one second, it's China strong arming themselves on the United Nations, you know, international agencies in order to deflect criticism of their human rights abuses. Next is their monopoly or near monopoly, 90 to 95%. On, on worldwide pharmaceutical and drug medicine production all over the world with very little oversight and at least a deadly results. So I do my best to keep up with you, but every time I look, there's another story about China and some of the nonsense they're up to. And this is why I'm here, to help people fight back. So the latest is a global brouhaha on China's cotton production in their Xinjiang province. So I came across this article titled, Everyone is in a rush to escape the dumpster fire that is a Xinjiang cotton crisis. And I found it from this very interesting website I came across called Sup China. And I don't know if they're in the pockets of the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP. So clever name aside, Sup China. Uh, according to Sup China's website, quote, Sup China is a New York-based, China-focused news information and business services platform. You know, we inform and connect a global audience regarding the business, technology, politics, culture, and society of China, end quote. Sounds great, right? So anyway, all these famous global fashion brands are under all this intense, heavy pressure to declare their products are free from cotton made in the Xinjiang province of China. And then when they make this statement, you know, China boycotts these brands back. It's like that scene in The Godfather when Michael Corleone, you know, played by Al Pacino, he tries to buy out Mo Green. I think it's like casinos or something. And Mo Green says, you know, I buy you out. You don't buy me out. Corleone family wants to buy me out. No, I buy you out. You don't buy me out. Anyway, you just watch the movie if you haven't seen it already, The Godfather, and see what happens to Mo Green. So back to the Dumpster Fire article from Sub China. So a bunch of global fashion brands, H&M, Adidas, Uniqlo, which is a Japanese casual wear chain, and I could never really figure out like their style or whatever because I'm not really you know, cool enough or young enough or dress weird enough to uh, wear it. So all those brands that are being, quote, forced 
to confront their stances on Xinjiang cotton, end quote, on Chinese social media. Basically, they're being called out and they have to declare their allegiance to Chinese made cotton. And I think Chinese social media, it, it means something like called Weibo. Weibo, I tried digging around Weibo and I can't tell if it's a Facebook, Twitter, or TikTok clone. It's all in Chinese. But I did go look at the app store and it says, quote, Weibo will guide you through every splendid moment all over the world and show you every story behind the screen. Share anything you want. Let the whole world hear your voice. Okay, so sounds great, right? Wow, what a cool app. However, I bet if I tried to share some anti-communist, maybe something that slightly critiqued China, it would prove that I can't, quote, share anything I want. So anyway, about a year ago, all these brands, H&M, Adidas, Uniqlo, and such, they, they said they were part of this thing called the Better Cotton Initiative, the BCI. And at this time, uh, the BCI wouldn't allow their members to source cotton from the Xinjiang region of China. And if you step back and go to episode 16 of Uncommon Goods entitled In China We Don't Trust, where I highlighted and talked about the cotton production in Xinjiang, I had no idea they made so much there. All of that and also their tomato production is made under the watch of paramilitary organizations using forced labor by Uyghurs. And it sounds like a really bad movie. Overall, cotton made in China, bad. Anyway, you can hear more about it at uncommygoods.com forward slash episode 16. So now all these brands, you know, are getting all this heat from the Chinese Communist Youth League. And they're all fired up and celebrities in China are ranting about boycotting all those global fashion brands back. They're boycotting them back. So it's almost like the pop stars when they used to protest apartheid back in the day. So here are some of the highlights. Adidas lost their Chinese endorsers, including A-list stars Dilraba Dilmurat. Oddly enough, she's a Uyghur actress popular with the Han Chinese majority. I wondered, you know, why is that the case? And oddly enough, or curiously enough, you know, yeah, she's very attractive. Uh, an actress, Li Yufei, who starred in the 2020 remake of Mulan. You know, oddly enough, I haven't even seen the first Mulan. I thought Disney kind of peaked and hit the top with the great classic movie, The Fox and the Hound. It's tremendous. It's great. Very emotional. And of course, it stars Kurt Russell, or at least the voice of Kurt Russell. Also, other brands such as Nike, Calvin Klein, and Converse, they have lost their Chinese brand ambassadors. Man, they are so fired up in China. They should probably start a movement called Chinese Cotton Matters. And if they have already, I'm sorry, I'm behind the times. So here's some more actions taken in China against these brands that are for the Better Cotton Initiative, the BCI. Uh, Tencent Games removed the, quote, Burberry design skins in their video games. I guess by skins, they mean like outfits that the characters could wear in the games. I don't know if you buy them or you win them. But anyway, the partnership ended between Tencent and the British fashion house Burberry, according to a statement. Also, there's a show called Youth Without You. It's like a reality show. It's almost like boy band competition. It's like K-pop. The, the, their hair is all nice. Uh, so the show Youth Without You, they started delaying their episodes because Adidas is a sponsor or was. And a lot of the dudes on the show were wearing like Adidas t-shirts and Adidas shoes. In fact, after I wrote this episode, I saw an article that like these shows are being aired with random blurring all over. The so I'll try and link it in the show notes. So another quote from the article, Chengdu Joy City, one of the biggest shopping parks in southwestern China, has taken down H&M signs on billboards outside of its buildings. End quote. No word if the stores are closed of the H&M stores. Uh, these actions and a bunch of others that are in the article, I've linked to in the show notes. And of course, you can go to uncommygoods.com forward slash episode 20, 26, I think. Uh, it's putting, you know, all these actions, it's putting a lot of heat on some of these brands. And you know what? Some of them are caving to the pressure. Quote, Muji, the Japanese home goods retailer, told in Chinese, uh, state-run media, uh, Global Times today that had never boycotted Xinjiang cotton. 
Many clothing items on the brand's online stores on Chinese e-commerce sites are now labeled as products of Xinjiang cotton, end quote. I wish we had that much kind of transparency when we buy stuff on websites in America. Where is it made? They always kind of hide that unless they're explicitly, uh, you know, solely made in America. BCI, if you recall, is the Better Cotton Initiative. Uh, BCI's Chinese spokesman said that they never discovered human rights abuse in Xinjiang and that the brand's decision decisions to boycott Xinjiang cotton had nothing to do with it. However, the person added that BCI had suspended its program in China due to pressure from various sides. Oh, gee, what a what a little cop out there. No, we didn't find any human rights abuses. Uh, BCI's website, they also removed the page about their suspension of certification for Xinjiang cotton. You can imagine the Better Cotton in, uh, Initiative. They would give out certifications if your cotton's good or bad. Is it better or is it not better? So here's another one I like. A couple of Chinese rappers went off on the boycott of Xinjiang cotton, including the great Louis Fuyang with his track Respect. And I try to find him on YouTube or anything, but I could not find anything about Liu Fuyang and his track Respect. Speaking of stealing uh, American-made products, you know, stealing the intellectual property, Respect, that's a great American song, Aretha Franklin. So here's a quote from the article. The song condemns the hypocrisy of American commitments to human rights, its mishandling of the COVID-19 pandemic, and its oppression of China. Some notable lines from Respect include, and this is pretty awesome rap music here. Here's the lyrics, okay. Giving us unfair treatment in the name of protecting human rights. They've lost the respect I once had for them. You want to be the world's leader, but you pretend you are just a peacekeeper. Okay, that kind of rhymes. Look at how you dealt with the pandemic. Xinjiang is much safer than your country. Yeah, it doesn't quite flow, right, does it? I don't think Eminem's going to sign this guy to his uh, his label. So it seems that H&M, they let the heat get to them, and I can't give them any sort of applause or any sort of support from now going forward because they completely lack moral courage. Uh, H&M released a statement back in March 31st, 2021, with this doozy of a quote. We are dedicated to regaining the trust and confidence of our customers, colleagues, and business partners in China, end quote. To that, I say no balls. These companies don't care about you. They only care about making money. I, too, enjoy making money, but ethically, I have to feel good at the end of the day. You know, these companies are caving. The BCI, H&M, Moji, they have no moral courage. You might ask, what is moral courage? It just sounds like two good words put together. It actually has a very strong and important meaning. Moral courage is the courage to take action for moral reasons despite the risk of adverse consequences. Courage is required to take action when no one has doubts or fears about the consequences. Moral courage, therefore, involves deliberation or careful thought. Basically, moral courage means willingness to do the right thing no matter the cost. Now, these don't companies don't have moral courage, but you can you know, don't buy from these companies. If you want to buy clothes, seek out and find American-made stuff. At the end of this show, I'll highlight a great resource to find American-made goods that a listener, Bo Boxjump, shared with me. And I love it. The Uncommon Movement is growing out there, and I love hearing from listeners. If you ever want to contact me, I'm at hello at uncommongoods.com. Also, you can find me at Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, just all at Goods. So there's some really great news. I haven't really thought of anything like computer technology related, um, you know, that is going to be made in the U.S. A lot of it is just outsourced to China. And in fact, nearly everything Apple makes is in China. And the last time I bought a HP laptop in 2011, they sent me a shipping notice that it was coming from China. So, so much for HP being a Silicon Valley company. Of course, I don't expect them to make the laptop in Silicon Valley, but it's an American company. So is Apple. But none of them make them in America anymore. At least most of them don't. So I was quite pumped to come across this article. Intel is back. New CEO's plan to make chips for other companies excites investors. This is an article on CNBC. And if you are aware, Intel, they're a giant in the technology world. They are a freaking legend. They have a long and storied history. And they're pretty much the king 
of making microprocessors. Uh, they're the little brains that power your computer. You know, back in the day, Intel had a great ad campaign called Intel Inside, and it was a huge success. So basically, whenever you bought a new computer, back then it would say uh, Intel Inside. So you knew you were getting something good, high quality, and of course, made in America. So from the article, quote, in his first extended public remarks since becoming Intel CEO, Pat Gelsinger offered an underlying message. Intel, the American chip making giant, is getting its swagger back. And so, you know, I, I take a look at some of the these other technology companies that make or that design their products in America. Okay, that's good. That's good. And then when it comes to making it, they outsource it usually to China or to other companies that, you know, they, they remove themselves a layer or two from the end, you know, end manufacturing process. So you look at other companies like Apple, you, you look at the iPhone box when you buy it and it says designed in Cupertino, California. That just means they designed it and they shipped it over to Foxconn to be made in China. And, you know, the Foxconn employees try and jump off buildings. It's true. So Intel, contrary to some industry expectations, said on Tuesday that they would not shift its decade old strategy to become a chip design firm that outsources manufacturing. Instead, it will double down on manufacturing and get this, invest $20 billion in two new chip factories in Arizona. $20 billion, right? So they're not changing with the times. They're going to, like they just said, they're going to double down and they're going to keep making their chips in America. They're not going to design and then outsource it elsewhere. I think that's very important for it, protecting intellectual property. The second you let something like this get within the Chinese borders, it's going to be copied and stolen. So the most, uh, so from the article, the most significant shift in strategy is a new division called Intel Foundry Services that taps into one of the biggest trends in the semiconductor world. Actually, they're you know they're not taking the strategy and applying it to themselves. They're just letting other companies go to Intel so they can make chips. This is what uh, the CEO is saying: We're bringing back the execution discipline of Intel what I've called the Grovian culture that we, what, that we do what we say we are going to do, Gelsinger said, referring to the legendary CEO, Andy Grove, who built Intel into a U.S. tech juggernaut during the 1980s and 90s. And I grew up during that time. I remember Intel growing. Uh, Andy Grove, highly respected leader, may he rest in peace. Uh, he even wrote a great book called Only the Paranoid Survive. So Intel... They not only make and design their own chips, they're going to be the source for making chips for other companies. And, you know, if these other microprocessor and chip companies are not going to make their own stuff, at least they're outsourcing it to an American company. I absolutely love this. And again, the best part, Intel is investing $20 billion to build manufacturing capabilities in Arizona. Quote, this is the Intel strategy, period, full stop. It does not depend on a penny of government support or state support or any other investments to make it successful, Gelsinger said. Intel said on Tuesday that it believed the foundry market could be worth $100 billion in 2025, end quote. And I love that part, too, so much. They're not asking the government or the state or, like, the cities for support. They're doing it because they believe one, not only in themselves, but they also believe in America. Another quote from The Godfather I believe in America. And I love this bit. Quote, Intel said it's received enthusiasm for its foundry services from companies including Amazon, Cisco, Google, IBM, and Qualcomm. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella even appeared in a short video to endorse the plan. Guess who was not on that list? Apple. So in the course, you know, thinking about Apple and microprocessors and here's a little bit of a tangent but like a few years ago Apple made a big deal about switching to Intel chips and now that they've switched out back to something else and I don't really care because I'm in the market for a new laptop I'm recording this on a MacBook it's a commie laptop I know I've had it for six years so I'm in the market for a new one and as I'm Insinuating here, it's not going to be a Chinese-made MacBook or a Kami book. And, you know, due to inertia and behavior and habits, I'm really tempted to stick with the Mac. You know, I've been using it for six years. You know, I went to the same high school as Steve Jobs. Of course, thankfully, much later than he did. 
Uh, my dad worked at Apple. So Apple is a big part of my upbringing. There's kind of that nostalgia, right? But however, Apple is full commie with a little bit of manufacturing in India. And okay, they make the Mac Pros in Texas or something like that. But those are like $8,000, you know, for the top of line one, you can get like $60,000. Uh, they're desktop machines, and let's face it, I just need to do some light audio and maybe some video editing. So I'm still in the hunt for a non commie laptop. Just last night, I almost hit buy on a Sony VAIO made in Japan. Therefore, it's uncommy, and it looks pretty cool. But I'm so used to the Mac OS that it just it seems like too much work to switch back to Windows. I haven't used Windows since 2015. I don't even know how Windows 10 works how do you use it right i look at it and i think it's just weird but you know what what's harder than switching computer operating systems you know i can think of something that's harder you know working for low pay under prison like labor conditions being separated from your family being force fed communist and marxist propaganda you know forced sterilization having your culture reduced and minimized so maybe i should quit crying about what computer i have to use in order to adhere to my uncommy principles. Again, I'm also looking for a webcam and some good lighting. If you're watching this on YouTube, I, I don't know, I look sunburned. Well, actually I am sunburned, but the lighting is just awful and I could use you know a little more high definition uh, so you can see my beautiful face. So now I'm gonna jump into the uncommy good of this episode. I'm ending this episode on a high note, the Intel Foundry, I'm so pumped on Intel, so I'm gonna buy Intel products wherever I can. But now onto the uncommon good of this episode, a little more everyday goods you can seek out. Uh, as always, they're not a sponsor of this show. Uh, I seek out and I find amazing products or companies that, you know, after I do a little research, I end up believing in them. And so I'm happy to spread the word on buying American-made goods. So this week's uncommon good, it's a website that a listener I mentioned earlier, Bo Boxjump, sent to me. Bo, spelled B A B E A U. So Bo, Bo Boxjump, he slid into my Instagram DMs to tell me about a great website called OriginMaine.com. And that's Maine as in the US state of Maine, you know, the East Coast. And uh, here's what he said. He like sent me this DM. It was pretty cool. Uh, so he said, check out Origin Maine. I'm, if you can see on YouTube, I'm using my phone. It's got a little bit of a white spider chalk on it from working out today. That's another great American made good. Anyway, I'm going off on tangents here. Uh, so he said, check out origin Maine. entire supply chain is U S and U S owned, uh, weaving local cottons to make their own denim to cut their jeans. They use local leather and their own tannery to produce handmade boots. All the meanwhile, they document their growth on Instagram. So he sent me a little link and I was like, this is pretty cool. So I was checking it out and I loved it. And so I dug around their website. They've got clothes, shoes, accessories, fitness equipment. And I looked at their shoes because they look pretty sweet. Um, their shoes are made from bison leather. And here's what their website said. I got so pumped when I read this. In 2011, we built a timber frame factory in the woods of Maine. We found the old timers to show us the old ways. We did what had to be done. We dug deep into the ground and in our hearts. We brought back what was forgotten. The people remembered why they used to be makers. The world's best. That's what American made used to mean. Here's a secret. It still does. I love that. How is that not a manifesto for bringing back production of goods back to the U.S.? So I, as I mentioned earlier, I you know Origin Maine makes like clothes. It's kind of oriented towards fitness, like sweats, hoodies, and hats and stuff, uh, and some shorts. Uh, they've got these cool underwears, that, uh, the American flag colors. It's not an American flag, so it's not blasphemous. And also, if you're into like jujitsu and mixed martial arts uniforms, I got those too. As I mentioned earlier, the leather boots and shoes, nutritional supplements from this amazing guy named Jocko Willink. He's a Navy SEAL. Just look up Jocko Podcast, J-O-C-O. -O. The guy's amazing. Uh, they have this fitness equipment, like these clubs that you can swing. You can add weights at the end of it and just these great exercises. And, you know, if you're just kind of chill, they even have some real main maple syrup. Uh, I know I mentioned it's kind of fitness oriented, but I do think anyone can find something they'd like at Origin Maine. In fact, 
the second that I finished recording this podcast, I'm ordering some of their black blackout jogger pants right after I finished recording. Anyway, I'm so damn inspired right now. The Uncommon movement really resonates with some great people. Like I just looked at their website. I loved everything I saw on Origin Maine. And, you know, Uncommon movement is spreading and they just it just called something else, you know, wherever it is. It's patriotism domestically sourced, you know, locally made, artisan, handcrafted, you know, with pride. So Bo Box Jump, I'm not sure if that's your real name. You know, you meant you reach out to me on Instagram. Again, thank you for listening from Australia. I really appreciate it. You know, you can slide into my DMs anytime. And no matter what you call it, making it in the US is where we need to go and support with our money. So check out originmain.com uh, or you can also check out Uncommy Goods dot com forward slash episode 26 to find out even more about origin maine you know see the articles mentioned in this episode and even leave a comment on my website again a huge favor go to uncommon goods at the apple podcast app give it five star rating and then write a review on why you like this show it not only does it make me feel good but it helps get the word out apple it's the algorithm the more reviews especially positive reviews you know, they promote it more and it spreads the message of buying American made goods. And to paraphrase Origin Maine, American made still does mean the world's best. And of course, it supports local communities, jobs, economic prosperity, growth, all that good stuff. Again, finally, subscribe to Uncommon Goods wherever you listen to podcasts. And thanks again. I'm Lars. This was Uncommon Goods, episodes 26 Cotton, Commies, and Computers. <laughs>